hope everyone can hear me. Yep, is it coming through? Kelsey, clearly worth her weight in gold. There we go. Great. Uh, so what I'm going to run through with you all is an unboxing experience of the VLX. For those of you that might even be new customers, you can see um, straight away we've had an update to our box. Uh, and we're going to go through all the different components that are inside and what that means for some of our customers and for um, pre-existing customers as well. So I'm just going to start by unboxing everything. It's a lot more sturdier box than we've had in the past. So you can feel free to throw this around. It is a slightly um, oversized box. So if you do travel by air, you do have to put it through oversized, but the batteries can be taken out and used in your hand luggage. And uh, this makes it totally flight safe. Everything's lined up for our online audience. Great, fantastic. So hopefully everyone can see some of the components that are in the VLX. I'll start with some of our most important pieces. The user manual that everybody reads, full of good information. Um, and uh, for some of our customers that know us already, we have even more information available up on the portal um, for anybody to take advantage of. All that good rich information is there. We also have even better guys, even more hype, our very own Navis door stops. There we go, big whoop and round of applause there guys. Great, so now onto some more of the serious stuff. Each system is shipped with um, four batteries. Uh, the system operates two at a time. Uh, that means you have a run time of an hour and a half. However, um, as I said, both systems are, sh are shipped with four batteries. We do have a two-way charger, which means you can charge two batteries at a time. Uh, most of our customers that operate in spaces where power is available find four batteries more than enough. They can cycle between one set that is on charge and another set that is actively being used. Uh, and that means you can really map all day long. If you're in an environment where you may not have electrical power available, you can definitely purchase like extra batteries so that you don't need to charge on site. Um, we also have a very attractive mapping belt. Uh, yes. Uh, and hopefully, I'm not going to mess my microphone up too much, otherwise our engineer might come for me. Uh, so great. So the mapping belt's on. This is going to take the majority of the weight of the system. So you might see the system once we unfold it, it's quite large. However, the weight of the system is coming directly to the hips. This means you can map all day. There's no problems with back pain. I am a tall person and I know what problems with back pain are. This is not this. Um, we also have a um, screw that comes with the system. So if we just see here, the system is fully size adjustable. So as well as the belt being adjustable, also the VLX is. Right now it is set to large as I'm quite tall, but that can go right down to extra small all the way up to extra large. I'm just going to unfold the system here. And now there are two screws either side of the VLX. And we screw these together uh, so that the system remains uh, tight and it's not going to um, fall side to side. We want it nice and rigid for mapping because we need this information for some of our control points. Just give me a moment. And we hear this click. As you can imagine, everything has been thought about. So the torque setting on our screwdrivers are set to the same uh, Newton force that needs to be applied for these screws. So you wait until you hear that click and then you're ready to go and the system is nice and stable. As I mentioned, the system operates with two batteries. So I'm just going to quickly plug these guys in. Nice and straightforward. We do have um, an SSD that is also external to the device. This is a terabyte's worth of storage. It means you can really map to your heart's content. You can map a really significant project, and everything can get stored here. There is a rubber tip. Ooh. So for some of our um, pre-existing customers, you might notice with the second generation, there's additional rubber coating around certain elements. And this is part of our new IP rating. So I'm just going to plug the SSD in. 
So we've got power, we've got the SSD, we are ready to go. The only other components that are in the box, we do have additional cables for the SSD, as well as uh, different power storage. So if you are stuck in the United Kingdom like myself, we do have the three pins in the box if you need them. So I'm just gonna lift the system out. And close the box down. Great. So I'm just going to start the system up and walk you through some of the components here. So as you've probably seen here on the booth, this is the Navis VLX second generation. So there's additional ergonomic elements like the grips on the arms here, as well as it being more lightweight than ever before. It has two LiDAR units, which have a range of up to 100 meters. And we also do collect intensity with the point cloud data. The camera array here at the top is four 20 megapixel cameras. And we also have our heads up display. Now, as an operator, this is the main component that you see. This is the user interface that uh, helps you understand what's happening on the VLX, gives you instructions on how to map uh, the best possible data. Uh, and it means it's nice and simple for the operator, very easy to use. I'm going to jump out of the application here so that hopefully you guys can see it up on the big screen. So if you just give me one moment. This is where we need some lift music or something in the background while I set everything up. So for those of you uh, that are watching online, there is a Navis LinkedIn that you can follow us on. You can also follow us on our newsletter. Uh, so you go to navis.com, you can sign up to the newsletter. And for those here at the booth, there's loads of people that are ready to pester and annoy you for while you're here. I've been working for nine months, Kelsey, it's such a cute question. And there's plenty of new roles available. Um, if you check navis.com, there's plenty of roles. We're a growing organization and feel free to come and join us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so we have two sensors orientated in different angles to improve the field of view. As I mentioned, they are 100 meter range and we do collect intensity. Um, I'm getting there. Give me a second, guys. Yeah, so from uh, zero to 100%, it's two and a half hours. And from zero to 80%, it's two hours to, to charge the batteries. Um, most of the time, your batteries are not going down to 0%. So the UI on the device will let you know if you're um, running close to the battery life. So you'll be told that the batteries are running low, and it'll give you the opportunity to switch them out to the new pair. So generally, they're jumping from you know, 30 to 70% as you map all day. But good question. All right. So. Run. Great. I think we're there, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. So I'm just resting the device here to perform their calibration so that all the information that we capture comes out level. A little bit of booth magic should hopefully be with us. We're praying, guys. I'm about to start with the Lord's Prayer. Hey. Thank God. Thank God. Right. Okay. So the device is calibrated now, which means we can pop it on. 
As I've said, the device's sizing is set for me, so it's nice and comfortable. The weight of the system is going directly to my hips. Um, right in the middle of the screen, so you probably can't really see it. Um, we can see on the top left, we've got the, the amount of power we have left on the batteries. We can also see the little file icon showing how much storage space we have as well. We can go into settings and also find out additional information about this VLX, like software version. And if you speak to most people at the stand, you want to get your system updated as frequently as possible. But right now, I'm going to start a new data set. And we're going to call it Last Demo. Great. And next. So now we're ready to go. Make sure everything's sorted, all our doors are open, and we're ready to start mapping. And now I'm just going to hit the Start Mapping button. So we just give it a second to start up with all the sensors and the cameras. And you should hopefully see the first instruction that I'm receiving from the device. So I need to rotate 90 degrees. So I just do that now. And then the mapping will start. Great. So you can hopefully see the screen, even the guys online. I can zoom in and see where our little VLX is. And I can zoom out. And you'll see as I start to rotate, the area is going to become more and more blue as we're collecting the point cloud information in these locations. Again, other things on the screen. So we still have battery life and storage capacity up on the device. We can now also see uh, manual images that need to be taken. So I can click the VLX action button and collect my first image. So now I've got everybody here, as well as your QR codes captured with the VLX. Um, and now I can get mapping. So I'm just going to walk off the stage and walk around everybody. Hopefully, it's still working behind me. Great. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, quickly catch the Faro guy. <laughs> uh, great. And then um, another feature that we can see up on the display here. So on the right hand side, we have the pause button. If you're um, mapping in environments that are maybe constantly changing, if somebody walks up to you and you know straight away they're going to tell you you're a stormtrooper, you can hit pause. And that will continue to work out your location in the environment. But that information will not be stored in the final point cloud. So anyone that's annoying, if a car is passing you while you're outside, hit pause. And you don't have to worry about that in the final data. Um, last thing I'll mention is about control point capture. So control points for us have always been super important, making sure that we can deliver the highest accuracy point cloud data. Uh, I'm going to stand back up on the stage, and hopefully those online will be able to see me. So I'm going to start by collecting my first control point. That bottom right button is our control point action button. Now I'm going to name my control point exactly as the target that I would see on the ground. So it might be primary. One, and like most surveys in the UK, that's how it starts. And then we hit Next. And you can see here we've got our first part of the tutorials. So the recent updates to, well, you guys will see some of the tutorials. You see some of the tutorial here where um, we've got infographics that let you understand what you need to do while you're operating the device. So we can collect both wall-mounted control points as well as floor-mounted control points. I'll give you a brief example now of the end of this Navis of how I would capture my control point. So I'm first going to take the device off, pop it down over my theoretical control point. And for those of you online, you can see the marker at the base of the VLX. Once I'm happy that it's over the position that it should be, I can click this action button. I don't have to worry about tilt. I'm not looking at a silly old bubble on top. The system is taking care of that completely automatically. So I click Go, and I know my control point is captured. I lift it up, and I'm ready to keep mapping. So the operation of the device is super, super simple, um, nice and accessible. You definitely um, don't need a PhD to operate the system. Um, when I'm finished mapping, I just hit pause and save.
and we can see a little metric as well as an, an image of the data that's captured. If I realized that I wanted to collect more information, if what I just captured wasn't enough, if I missed some rooms, I could go back and return to mapping and make sure I've captured absolutely everything. Um, but right now I've captured everything I needed to, so I'm just going to hit finish. And my mapping is complete. So the next part of the process would be to take out the SSD card and plug that into uh, my machine, get it uploaded to the cloud processing add-on and start processing my data. If anyone here is particularly interested in cloud processing or Navis Ivian, feel free to grab one of your representatives uh, and we'll walk you through the process. Anybody online can go to navis.com uh, and find additional information there. Uh, thanks, everybody.